Good day, viewers. Welcome to a new edition of 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television with me, Manir Dan Ali. Our guest today is a professor of constitutional law, someone who was the legal advisor of former military president, General Sani Abacha. I'm talking about Professor Awalu Hamis Uyadudu, who is lectured for decades at Bayero University, Kano, and does a lot of other things related to his field of practice. Professor Yadudu, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you, Manir. I'm happy to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm hoping you could help us understand some of the issues that touch on law, uh, some uh, current affairs, for example, the recent visit of the group known as Patriots to President Bola Tinubu, where they are conversing for new constitution and all what's not. Yeah. And I know it's an all conversation. Yeah. Why are they going at this time? Well, um, it is best known to them, but uh, in a way, um, I, I may say this, the they had been at it for some time. And they were even trying to get uh, some uh, persons from outside their cycle to be part of the show. I haven't been uh, uh, invited, but I indicated some uh, reservations about uh, what they were up to. So Why? They, uh, Why were you? Well, why I was, uh, 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 so uh, 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 I expressed a reservation was that, first of all, they had already made up their mind what they wanted, that the, the, the existing constitution is illegal, and that the best, it, the, 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 we cannot make any progress if we don't throw it away, and that uh, they have convoked uh, a meeting way back in March at which they cooked some uh, uh, communique and said that uh, that's where they are going to go and that they want to have a new constitution which is adopted by uh, a referendum. Now, obviously, <clears throat> this is wrong and this is uh, misplaced. And, uh, but of course, uh, it Pre, uh, actually, it all started at uh, the uh, constitutional uh, national conference of uh, President Jonathan ten years ago. Uh, it was a conference that uh, basically didn't uh, reach any conclusions to the way forward, but they had been conversing the issue of a new constitution uh, that uh, would uh, uh, completely displace this one and be adopted by a referendum. This is chaotic. There is no basis for it. And you mean chaotic from the legal angle of chaotic case? Chaotic from the legal point of view. Mm, chaotic political. From, yeah, chaotic from the legal as well as political. From the political angle, a president exercises his powers, owes his legitimacy, and uh, has sworn allegiance to uphold this constitution and to implement it. Uh, the detail the National Assembly. So you cannot come forward with a proposal which completely subverts the existing order uh, and for the president uh, to, to say that, okay, uh, uh, let it go, and then we do as we advise. This but, is, uh, yeah. but one of their main arguments is that the Constitution, we have the 1999 Constitution, is enacted by military that is not we the people kind of constitution whereby the Nigerian people, as they say, are yeah. the actual enactors of that document. We have never had any constitution, even way back uh, in, in, in the colonial times, that you could say we the people as a representative body have uh, looked at and therefore adopted in the manner that, for example, the United States adopted their constitution. In the colonial days, it was more of a consultation of uh, key players who went to London and also agreed on certain terms. And then the colonial administration uh, introduced the 60 constitution. 63 uh, was more or less uh, a conversion of the 60 to become Republican when we did away with the, the Queen. So it is a continuation of the 60. Now, 
uh, you would say 63 was overthrown in 66. Yes. And the 79 constitution uh, clearly was a constitution that had some deliberative processes uh, of the people. There was uh, a constitution drafting committee, which was chaired by uh, uh, late Chief Rotimi Williams, whose uh, recommendations were subjected to the endorsement of a constitutional assembly. Obviously, some may say at some point, uh, the military, uh, on, the f from the, on the one hand, they gave some directory as to how they wanted the direction of uh, uh, the that policy to go. Yes, yeah. instead of uh, the divisive, destabilizing parliamentary system to a more centralized, more acceptable presidential system. Some would use that to say that it was a military uh, constitution, but I think uh, it is largely uh, uh, the outcome of a deliberative process of the uh, 49 wise men, 50 if uh, sorry, Aulo had not uh, backed out, uh, which was subjected to the constitutional assembly processes. So it is it was midwived under a military regime, but was, a, uh, I would say, a deliberative process. There that was the, the involvement of people right. outside the military cycles. Oh, yes. What uh, about the 1999 constitution? It was still enacted by the military. Did it have the involvement of other people other than the uniformed military people? Well, uh, it, it did in, in the sense that... Uh, before the 99 constitution, there was the uh, 1995 constitution, which was a product of the uh, 1994 constitutional conference. Again, a deliberative process, but when General Abacha died and General Abdul Salam assumed uh, uh, responsibility, and I happened to have continued to be his uh, legal advisor, his decision was that, and he consulted, and there was an overwhelming apparently rejection, total rejection of the 1995 uh, constitution, constitution, which was uh, the product of the 94 process. And he established a committee of, I, I think, 46 people. Uh, just Nikki Toby, who died, was the chairman. And uh, again, uh, Dr. Suleiman Kumo, again, of blessed memory, was his uh, uh, secret, uh, deputy chairman. And I happen to be also on the committee. The, the deliberation that took place across the nation, given the time constraint, because Yara Abdul Salam really wanted to go in 11 months, and uh, there was not enough time to, to do the kind of uh, elaborate construction. Exactly. So we settled for the Nigerians. Our report clearly was there was an overwhelming support for the 1979 constitution to be adopted was modification because there are there are a number of things that had happened between 79 and 98 and that if you adopted 79 you had to adjust it for example more states than existed uh, and there were other things that had happened uh, so that too in my view had the participation of the public but wouldn't it be the excuse of this group of Nigerians who, are, I mean, are looking for that, look, it didn't go through all the, what you call, deliberative processes. There was no long involvement of Nigerians in bringing out that constitution of 1999, which is why they still want a brand new constitution. Well, you see, my response to that is that Essentially, and I maintain this, our problem, the problem of Nigeria is not constitutional in the sense that if you throw away this constitution, you introduce another one, this problem will simply disappear. The, we, we, we look at how the parliamentary system worked. It worked not because it was parliamentary, but because the leaders of that, that, that time made it work. This constitution also can work if the, the political class, those in a position of authority, want to make it to work. But some people are saying that it is too expensive, this bicameral uh, legislature, 
and so many things which maybe Nigeria cannot afford. Well, uh, that too, this constitution itself is not written on, uh, 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 on stone, cast in stone, uh, such that you cannot change it. You can change every aspect of it, only that you have to do so in the terms it has stipulated in the processes. And that, that is through the existing national legislature that does this periodic constitution amendment uh, exercises. Exactly, exactly. Of course, uh, as I, I keep saying, the, the outcome of such processes may not be to the liking or at, at the pace uh, or to the extent of the, the, the uh, quantum of changes brought about. But a written constitution by nature does not change just suddenly overnight from one form to another. It takes time. We not have, we, unfortunately, uh, we do not have the benefit that the Americans have had of 200 years to do the number amendments. You see, the American constitution is a very small constitution adopted about over 200 years ago, but over the years, the amendment, the way we have been going about it, yes. uh, have, has afforded them an opportunity to bring about changes. Same has happened to this constitution. There were some major reforms undertaken in the electoral uh, 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 system, yeah. in the electoral area. Now, again, it may not have solved all the problems. i give you one, 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 one simple example. When we had the problem of uh, late uh, Omar Aradua uh, being unable to, uh, to, discharge, to his, discharge his function or to even, to even uh, uh, send a letter, uh, send a letter to them, the, the way we, it was solved is by the, what was known as doctrine of necessity. And at the end of the day, the Constitution was amended to take care of that. In, in that uh, if a president leaves without giving notice or is unable to do so, after 21 days, uh, uh, the, the National Assembly can, uh, by a resolution, uh, uh, invite the vice to act. And after a certain period, if nothing is forthcoming, he can be made uh, to be the president, which is how uh, uh, President uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan came, to power. came to power. But how... Why do you think some people are so fixated on the constitution? You are saying that Nigeria's problem is not constitutional. What then is the problem? Well, uh, there are a whole sort of uh, problems that one can envisage. I think generally the tendency is that if you are outside looking in, Politicians, they tend to uh, give the dog a bad name to hang it. Uh, the, the, this is one reason. A second reason, of course, is that there is a bit of nostalgia with the, the elderly. If you uh, look at uh, what's going on, there are some people who are saying that, let's go back to parliamentary, the parliamentary system. Who in this nation at this moment is so familiar with the 63 uh, old parliamentary system and if you knew why we went away from the parliamentary the insta the destabilizing exactly, which led to even the military, the military coup and among other reasons, reasons. Yes. yeah so are you saying that you introduce a parliamentary system here with the way people change their parties we will be having as many as a hundred yeah. governments in, in within one year. Yeah, so I mean, itself. Italy will have a competitor. Exactly, Italy will have a competitor. Having in, in, too many changes of government. Exactly. So it is some of those nostalgia, uh, uh, the opposition uh, uh, seeking some relevance, and and also uh, I, I think the the I would say really lack of a sincere appreciation of the fact that a constitutional system and a nation building is always something work in progress. It is never completed. Uh, it is ongoing, and you keep uh, uh, improving on it over time. This is how, how, how nation, other nations have developed. But there's a frustration sometimes, for example, with some amendments that need the concurrence of states. Let's say the local government functions local government autonomy. autonomy. So many times 
the National Assembly Constitution Amendment process will go to the level of okay in all of it, but then because of this concurrence issue, the states will not agree. There are key problems with our processes, one of which is the uh, inability to get the, the necessary number of state houses of assembly to concur to the to the proposed amendments which kills it but if you take uh, a census of the number of bills and proposals that have been sent to the state house of assembly and those uh, concurred to or accepted are far more than those not concurred to why there are a number of reasons i think a lot of the blame uh, 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 lies at the door of governors. It, 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 it's a pity to say this, but uh, sometimes even states' House of Assembly would act against their own self-interest when they are uh, uh, pushed about and twisted uh, to, to, to reject things. That There was a time when uh, a proposal to give House, states' House of Assembly autonomy was, was turned down. They could not get uh, this is something, something in their own interest, but they wouldn't uh, the governors approve it. would undermine it. The other uh, elephant in the room on regarding what happened to the process is also the assent of the president. You see, you, you, may, you may even succeed into submitting uh, 30 bills to the assemblies of the states, and we get all the assemblies of the state to agree to it, but if it comes to the president and he, he withholds his assent, the whole thing uh, uh, will, will go down the drain. And therefore, it will go, it will come to naught. Um, we'll go into a bit of details of that yes. after coming back from this short break. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, it is 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television. And our guest today is Professor Awalu Yadudu a constitutional law expert in Nigeria. You were talking about the undue influence of governors and also maybe the president waking up on the wrong side of the bed and deciding not to accent. How do we deal especially first with the issue of governors? Because in the whole of this current republic, there is the sense that governors are just too powerful in fact, even presidents, sometimes it takes a strong president to say no to governors when they come together. And they are the lords of not just the states, but also the local government. How maybe constitutionally can you deal with this problem that is clearly uh, affecting the smooth running of things? Well, the... Uh Unfortunately, there isn't much you could do by way of constitutional uh, uh, tweaking and uh, uh, reformulation. There isn't much. Essentially, it is uh, a political and social, socioeconomic, uh, uh, di it has social and political dimension. The, if our civil society, if our communities were to take ownership of the process, of uh, not only of constitution making, but things about uh, autonomy of local governments, uh, uh, giving account of their stewardship and uh, checking their excesses, that you can make much more mileage uh, in that regard than in uh, making some constitutional uh, changes. As for the presidential assent, for example, for the constitutional amendment, the, 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 the tendency is uh, you don't know which comes for the chicken or the egg. The, the, there were proposals in the past to dispense with the, the need for the president to assent. Basically, the American model that we borrowed does not require presidential assent, assent right. uh, for a constitutional amendment to come into force. Once it meets the, con the required concurrence of states' House of Assembly. Why I say it is chicken or the egg is that the president, uh, if you, because the existing order now for you to, to dispense with his assent, you will have to amend the constitution and submit it. If he, if he doesn't assent, obviously is very unlikely to assent 
to a proposal which dispenses with this as in the future. And the National Assembly doesn't have the power in this circumstance to override the president? No, technically, why the, the president's assent was required or is required in constitutional amendment is because bills to amend the constitution are considered as bills, meaning they are subjected to ordinary, uh, ordinary lawmaking processes of first reading, second reading, and then the, the adoption by the assembly, and then you submit the bill to the president for his assent. Now, the, uh, unfortunately, the constitution as drafted has in a way made even the constitutional process to involve such a process and therefore to require the uh, uh, the assent of the president to effect it. Now, if you consider that process to be like the normal lawmaking, there is the option that the National Assembly has of overriding uh, the, the president, veto, yes, yes the, the president. It has not happened yet. Uh, I think it is a window. It is a window available they can in, uh, in 2015. Uh, uh, there was a constitutional uh, uh, amend, amendment process that had been gone through that was submitted to the president. Some said he had assented, but the, the version that came became public was that he did not assent to the uh, process. And th the threat by the National Assembly to override his assent was, was, was made, but it didn't uh, come to fruition. And then somebody even went to court uh, mm. to, to insist that the court should interpret whether or not the presidential assent was needed in a constitution amendment to become effective. What this meant was that because it was in the twilight of an impending national election, election yeah. nobody wanted to go into a national nationwide election with uh, a, cons a, a, a serious constitutional crisis yes. of a matter being in court and not knowing mm. how it would So end. the process was aborted? It was aborted. Right. The Supreme Court itself, to, to which some people went, uh, said that they would allow the parties to settle out of court. And of course, uh, nothing happened uh, uh, from that. So the possibility exists that they can override the president's asset. What about the issue of creation of states? It keeps recurring, and every time you see, I mean, groups going to make their case and what have you. But some people say that if you follow the all the things provided within the constitution, it is near impossible to create any new state, no matter the uh, interest concerned. Indeed, uh, because the, the, the constitutional prescription for state creation is such that if you want to carve out certain local government areas uh, from one state to become either an independent or another state, you require the, 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 the involvement and the, the participation of the communities to agree to the resolutions. And a referendum to see whether it has been adopted. And at the end of the day, you will require also the, the, the same proposal to come to the National Assembly for it to be adopted. Now, because politicians are unwilling to engage in the kind of give and take to lead to some consensus as to, okay, if we wanted to create states, for example, let us work in such a manner that we can create one state each for each zone, for example, because the zone also has become... Yes. Uh, yeah. But you, the moment you make such a proposal, the Saudis would say, oh, we need one more state to be equal with the... So the whole thing would be scattered. I think the failure of uh, 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 attempts to succeed at creating states is partly due to the difficult uh, and tenuous uh, constitutional prescription, but largely due to the failure of the elite and the political class to come to some form of consensus, because they can, if they wish. 
uh, to, to come to some consensus to say that, okay, like uh, in 1996, uh, the military arising from the report of the uh, Constitutional Conference of 1994, uh, a, a report was submitted to the military and based on the submission of the report, they were able to come to, term, to the decision that maybe we needed six states and they created six states which were uh, one each out of uh, the zones. Uh, zones. But was it, was it deliberate, sir, you are part of that constitution making, was it deliberate that you made it so difficult out of maybe the understanding that Nigerian politicians want to learn, just create all sorts of things if you make it easy? Well, and it, by implication, it means it's only a military government that can create new states. Actually, this audit is origin to the 1979 constitution, which was carried to the 1999 constitution. So, in a way, it is more a decision based on the knowledge by those who are in the uh, CDC of 76. Uh, the Rotimi Williams uh, yes. committee, committee, and also the Constant Assembly uh, of 77-78, uh, that realistically, if you made it so easy and so flippant, you do not know the number of states that you would end up, every community, every village, every ethnic community would insist that they want to have their own uh, states. The, 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 therefore, for you to be able to do it, you must be able to garner some sufficient support among the communities and also to get some buy-in of the nation. So it's a very difficult exercise. It is. Let's move to one final and quick one. The National Assembly. Why is it that the Nigerian National Assembly and even the state legislatures, they see themselves as competitors with the executive? They want to do projects, not lawmaking. Just yesterday I was listening to an ex-legislator saying that, look, even the 21 million and all the millions going to us, it's just chicken change compared to what goes to the executive. Why is it that... Is it the, a constitutional problem or is it some other problem that you reckon that is causing this uh, lack of understanding of the essential role of the legislature? Well, believe me, it is uh, not so constitutional. Constitutionally, the powers of each uh, organ of state are very clear. Uh, the, 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 they have come, especially the legislators, to the conclusion and to the decision that the only way they will be relevant to their communities and nation on the na on the national scene is to 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 get or either to act like they are part of the executive or to get the executive to do their bidding. Uh, it is less a matter for the constitution, but more a political uh, ping pong and. Uh, uh, a, a survival uh, uh, tactic for 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 the legislators. They they would have no relevance uh, to their communities if all they, they did was to to pass laws and to approve budgets. If they have no way of participating in the way the budgets are carried out, it is uh, more political and uh, less uh, legal or constitutional as such. Thank you very much, Professor Awalu Yadudu. I'm afraid we've exhausted the time allotted to the program, but thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you so much. Viewers, that's the end of this edition of 30 Minutes. Keep a date with us.